everybody, today's video is about increasing critical analysis in your essays to help increase your essay marks and I've been asked for this session by so many students. Um, if any of you have received feedback on an assignment that states this essay is too descriptive or your assignment needs to be more analytical or critical, then this video is for you. I'll be giving you some simple steps to use and showing you some example narrative that shows the difference between descriptive writing and critical analysis. I've been a university lecturer and marker of essays for many years and critical writing is a skill that can be practiced and learnt the more you write and lots of students find it challenging at first. I hope you find this simple video helpful. Some of you might also find these two videos helpful for your essays. They're free on my YouTube channel, how to write in third person and another one on integrating citations and sources into your essays that includes paraphrasing an author's work and integrating direct quotes. So do check them out if you think they'll be helpful. So before I give you lots of tips on how to write critically, Firstly, what is critical analysis? So it's not just about negative critique. Critical analysis in essays, you're critiquing the positives and what works, the challenges and limitations in the available evidence on your topic area. And then you're giving your perspective about the evidence and people's work. So you're not just describing what one person said. I and mean, you might start with a real key study but and give an opinion, but your perspective needs to also be informed by other sources, citations and references, so that you're e expressing an informed opinion using a range of sources and citations to back up your points. And when I say citations, this is where you present the author's surname and year in brackets in your essay text. The full reference of your citation and sources then goes in a reference list at the end of your essay. And in healthcare essays, which is my field, you usually, you're you usually integrating several sources to offer alternative perspectives. And the key is that your opinions are informed by valid and relevant evidence to your topic area. So the sources that you use need to be critically appraised and evaluated. And you'll see students will be spending hours on databases in libraries looking for um, valid references and studies and sources that link to their topic area and they have to evaluate and make a judgment on those sources. What evidence do they provide? How do they fit with my topic? And we also have this what's hierarchy of best evidence in healthcare. So larger empirical research studies is higher up the hierarchy than an anecdotal opinion piece, for example. And not to say you can never use an opinion piece. So I'm currently writing up my PhD thesis and I've appraised some key systematic reviews and empirical research studies, but I might use one opinion piece that a patient wrote in a newspaper that links directly to one of my recommendations, for example. But you always use your stronger sources where possible, such as systematic reviews and peer reviewed research studies, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so once you've critically appraised the evidence, critically and critical an analysis then moves to the whole topic. So you're using all those references and sources and you're almost theming what you found. So, for example, my topic was to do with electronic patient records. And I found researchers that said nurses use of electronic patient records was really positive for patient safety and um, but the majority of studies I found were evaluating the implementation of electronic patient records in different settings and then there was also research studies that examined nurses perceptions of electronic patient records um, and then I found this gap in evidence that there was um, limited studies or no studies examining how nurses electronic patient use um, affected nurse patient communication at the time and this is the same for any essay. If you're looking, so for example, if you were looking, I'm really interested in the arts in healthcare with patient care. So if you were looking at art, music or dance and how that supported patients with dementia, you'd say this evidence suggests A, this evidence suggests B, this is the situation, what does it mean? So what do you suggest moving forward? So we have this combining of evidence to come out with this informed perspective and your concluding points. So what are the gaps? What does this mean to this topic for patients, for nurse education? And this is synthesis, which, and synthesis, lit can't speak today, Synthesis literally means combining separate elements to make a whole. So you've got all these separate sources, but you've got to bring them together 
to um, compare, to contrast and to make that central point and to use that evidence to back up the main arguments. Um, for example, which it could be to conduct more research in an area, to provide more nurse education or to change our practice, nursing practice in some way, all depends on your topic area. So I'll talk through some simple processes to help you increase your critical analysis. So just looking at getting started, what you do first when you're looking at evidence and sources, I'm not going to go through how to do database searches where you narrow your topics down using keywords, you set parameters for the dates of publications. Healthcare librarians, university librarians should show you how to do this. You can book one to one sessions in most good university libraries, and that's something I had to do when I came. I didn't start my PhD till I was in my 50s and I was a bit out of touch with the technology and I found it extremely helpful. Um, so you're going to have a list of sources, you'll have done your search, you'll have a list of sources and you need to evaluate and make a judgment on the relevance of those citations, those references on those databases. Um, and at first you're going to be looking through lots of abstracts and when you're reviewing the abstract, the title of the paper and the abstract may give you enough information to exclude it from your topic area. Sometimes you look at an abstract and it's not what you expected at all. It might state study and just be an opinion piece in a different topic area. Um, so if you've got a well-written abstract, you can exclude papers. But that abstract, if it doesn't, doesn't offer enough information, then you may have to review, well, you would have to review the whole article if you're unsure. To read the whole paper. And we also have this hierarchy of evidence which indicates best evidence in healthcare. So at the top is systematic reviews. So when you're going through you want to be looking at those systematic reviews and that's where they will have empirical evidence will be collated, they'll be um, it will be systematically reviewed, appraised and synthesised to answer a question that might be linked to your topic area. Then you've got critically on that hierarchy, you've got critically appraised and peer reviews, evidence, synthesis articles. Then you've got individual studies, randomised control trials, cohort studies, case studies, and it goes on. And at the bottom of that hierarchy is um, background information and expert opinion. So, as I said, if there's systematic reviews, start with those um, and then carry on down and looking at research studies to inform your points that you're going to make in your um, essay. So once you've got all your relevant sources, you're going to have to critique, appraise, evaluate the in evidence individually. So um, looking at whether a paper is relevant to your chosen topic area or research question, um, you need to think about the type of study, which we sort of talked a bit about in the previous slide. But if it's a research study, for example, what type of research study? It could be qualitative, quantitative or mixed methods. If it's a type of review, is it a scoping review or systematic review? And you do need to include those little details when you're discussing a key paper, the type of study, the design. And I'll give a narrative example of this later. Um, you need to think about the authors as well. Who are the authors? Are they reputable? Um, are they researchers? Has the, or have the authors been peer reviewed? Is it a reputable journal if it's a research study? Are they academics in their field or nurse educators, educators or practitioners if it's sort of an anecdotal piece? If it's an online report, is it from an established institution such as the Nursing Midwifery Council or a government institution? So are they reputable? And what experience or role does the person have? Are they eminent in their field? Um, this would be, especially if you're going to include a video uh, and reference a video as a citation or um, a podcast, for example. And then you need to move on to sort of what research methods and data analysis has been used. What is the study population? For example, is the study um, examining nurses or patients' perceptions? Where was the study conducted? in the hospital or community, and it could have relevance if this has relevance to your topic area. Or which country? Are you going to include global papers or just UK papers? Healthcare systems can differ across countries, so an article might not be relevant if you're examining UK hospice care systems, for example, because there's different funding models for health and social care and hospice care across countries. But if you're looking at a patient with dementia, 
a patient in dementia in Australia, India or UK would have similar brain degeneration. So if you're examining how dance or music helps a patient with dementia, the studies could be from any country, could be, you could go globally with that. Um, so you need to review what the intention of the paper or the source that you're using is. Why did they conduct the research or write this paper? What was the aim or purpose of a study or an online report or a blog even? When was it published? So um, how far back do you want to go for your publications? Um, so you need to think about narrowing your searches down. It might be to the last deca decade. However, if you're, you're wanting to provide some background or examine a framework that is from years ago, from the 1970s or seminal works, for example, you might want to include a nursing theory or the nursing process. Um, so you might have to go for references sort of further back. Um, and then you need to summarise key findings, results, outcomes and conclusions or limitations, strengths and weaknesses. And these are just some key areas to look at for each individual source. And I found it always used to find it really helpful making just bullet points on these key areas, um, especially on seminal works. So I hope the previous slide helps when you're critically appraising individual papers and sources for essays. However, if you're doing dissertations, it's different. You need to reference and state the critical appraisal tools and checklists that you've used to appraise the studies that you've included in your thesis. And there's a range of different um, tools, crit critical appraisal checklists and tools for quantitative, qualitative and mixed method studies. And you'll need to reference and present those tools or checklists that you've used in your thesis. Um, a good place to start is the Critical Appraisal Skills Programme website under CAS checklists. And you will see different tools checklists to help you appraise qualitative studies, quantitative randomised control trials, systematic reviews, cohort studies, case controls, economic evaluations. But then you also uh, have different tools for mixed methods studies. And in my PhD, I had lots of mixed method studies to appraise. And I found the mixed methods appraisal tool, MMAT, MMAT, by Hong et al. 2018, the easiest. You may find other tools out there. It's absolutely fine if you prefer a different type of tool, but these, these resources are quite helpful. And I've provided the full reference for Hong et al. 2018 at the end. So if you are doing dissertations in years to come, to a year or two, you might come back to this slide. So I hope that helps. So once you've appraised, your individual sources and papers and studies, it's helpful then to move on to the next stage by systematically organising and comparing and contrasting the evidence that you've got. And you might do that from when you get your first paper, or you might prefer to appraise several papers and then start to compare and contrast. It's really up to you and how you work. But always remember to record the reference because it's terrible to try and go back sometimes and find the reference that you found this evidence from. So try and do that from the start. So organising your evidence is important. And in my video on citations and references, I talk about referencing management tools that you can use so you don't lose references. And essentially, you have digital repositories on these tools that will host your references um, and PDFs of references as well. So it's helpful to make notes, bullet points to compare the differences and similarities across the whole evidence that you've got and all those sources. I, you know, some students use highlighter pens and prefer to do it by hand. Others will do it um, sort of systematically on a computer but you're starting to theme your evidence and findings and it makes this makes it much easier to formulate clearer paragraphs and sections in your um, essay because you're looking at the whole overview you're looking for the facts what's the situation here what are the gaps does this evidence support or challenge perspective, your perspective or others perspectives and does it support your key points and views? Um, so in my PhD thesis, which I'm writing, I'm comparing papers. I was able to state, because I'd done that overview, I was able to state how many studies were US studies, UK studies, how many were set in GP practice or in primary care or in hospitals. And so, so that's quite good when you to have an overview as well before you introduce 
introduce your papers even. Um, but it's really good to compare the findings and, and what the findings are showing. Um, and that helps build up your key points. So you can use evidence to support your to support your key points. And I'll show you some examples of that um, with some narrative later. Then we've got synthesis and synthesis is the process where you're literally combining parts to make a whole. So the parts are the key papers, the sources, the evidence that you've critically appraised to make the whole, the whole being the critical analysis, the key points, the conclusions to move this chosen topic area forward. So what did you find? What does the evidence suggest? Sometimes it's helpful to try and uh, just say it in two or three sentences. I remember with some um, students, I'd, they'd look at lots of literature and get overwhelmed and I'd say well just verbalize to me in two or three sentences what you found and or write it down in two or three sentences and keep it simple um, because you can get overwhelmed with managing lots of evidence and sources but you'll have gained insights from doing that and going through that process systematically um, to, to sort of state what the what the evidence is showing as a whole so what are the implications of your findings what does this mean for your chosen topic for patients our profession nurse education or future research in this area and you're making a central point at the end of key paragraphs and main sections in your essays and in your conclusion and that's your synthesis you're using the evidence to build up those key points you're backing up your suggestions um, so, for example, we might need to conduct more research in this area or provide more nurse education or review future practice. And I'll, I'll give you some narrative examples. So I thought it would be helpful to give a practical example of descriptive narrative, which is setting the scene. It's factual. I'm not giving my perspective of papers in, in um, any depth. There's a lack of critical appraisal uh, and it just relates to the area of interest, my area of interest, which is nurses EPR use. So this description is signposting key papers, reports. It sets the topic area in context. And um, what you will note, though, is I am having to include what the aim of the report was. Um, uh, and, and this might not be appropriate for your essays. It depends on your essay guidance. Always follow your module guidance. But this is clearly descriptive. Um, narrative. So in 2002, a UK programme for information technology was launched that was supported with a 6.2 million government, government budget with the reference. In 2019, a significant independent report followed on behalf of the UK Secretary of State for Health and Social Care called the Topple Review, preparing the healthcare workforce to deliver the digital future. This widely referenced report set out core plans over the following two decades for a digital future digital infrastructure which included the sole use of EPR systems across organizations and the integration of smartphone apps genomics artificial intelligence digital medicine and robotics across healthcare so the fact that I'm saying it's widely referenced like there's some bits of appraisal there and also I am giving the aim of the paper the pat plans in the paper there as well but it's it is descriptive so in this example, I've got a key research study um, that's being presented with some example critique. It's been critically appraised. Um, it hasn't been compared with another study. Obviously, I'm restricted with wording on this slide, but you'll get the picture. Um, so Rhodes et al. exploratory study examined nurse patient interactions during routine consultations in primary care settings across nine GP practices. A computerised checklist was used during consultations and the researchers explored what this meant for person-centred care. 25 consultations were videotaped that included patients, doctors and nursing participants. Using conversation analysis, the authors examined the use of a rigid checklist and how it suppressed the patient's agenda. A common feature in the data set showed that nurses' use of computer templates impu imposed a formulate structure to the consultation. Nurses did not invite the patient to ask questions or express any concerns. This was a feature of more than a third, nine out of 25 of the consultations. Rhodes et al. 2006 suggests that nurses' use of computerised checklists promotes a task-orientated approach and a tendency towards closed nurse-patient communication. Finding from this study may not be generalisable to settings outside primary care and further limitations are found and you can carry on. 
And you can see in this example, it covers the pointers that I suggested earlier. We've detailed the type of study, the purpose, the intention of the researchers, the setting, the participants, the analysis, findings, limitations. But there is no comparison with other studies. So you've appraised the study, you've given an overview. But to increase your critical analysis, it needs to be linked to a concluding statement and, um, and then compared with other sources. So in this example, I'm starting to compare and contrast some studies with each other generally more as an overview. I am limited with words on these slides. So um, the four key studies criti critically analysed within this review use a qualitative and mixed method evaluative research approach. Study designs include a qualitative descriptive study to explore the culture of nurse patient interactions associated with electronic bedside documentation and three service evaluations analysing the effects of implementing electronic systems across local hospital ward settings. The types of electronic health record systems examined within these studies included electronic documentation and electronic bedside observation and handover system, MyChart bedside digital app and electronic health records. Three of the studies reviewed were conducted in the US and one study took place in the UK. And then you could talk about where the study settings were, for example, but it's giving sort of an overview where I'm combining and contrasting and comparing some studies here as an example. So rather than a general overview of key studies that I did in the previous slide, in this example, I'm starting to compare, contrast more specific sources with each other to build up my points. And here we're comparing the findings from a national survey with Bloom's research study to make a key point. Again, I'm limited on words, but it gives you an idea of what I mean. Poor usability relating to EPR systems continues to be a major issue for healthcare professionals in acute case services across the UK. For example, the 2022 NHS England EPR Usability Survey indicated that acute care frontline staff users are more frustrated than they are satisfied with EPR usability with references. Survey respondents highlighted technical issues such as logon complexities and a user interface that needs too many clicks. A large UK study by Bloom et al reported similar findings when they surveyed 1,663 staff in emergency departments across 192 healthcare organisations. None of the staff surveyed felt that EPR systems met the standard of usability considered acceptable with a reference. Therefore, you could now go on and make a point about poor EPR usability, how it impacts on nurses or another type of point. But you can see here how by linking these two um, together, these two sources together, it's backing up a point that I'm now going to make on EPR usability and how it impacts on nurses. Um, and that's where you're starting to synthesise and, and you've got more critical analysis than just talking about separate um, sources individually. It's that comparing, contrasting, theming and then moving it forward to make a point that increases your critical analysis. So it's important to use academic language in your essays, but that can take time and, and the more you write, the easier it will get. Um, the University of Manchester has an academic phrase bank, which some students find helpful, but you're going to find certain academic language and words that suit your own style the more you write. When you're first setting the scene, it's important in essays to be factual, unbiased and accurate. So when I was describing that first, that slide where I was describing um, the context for electronic patient records, digital health, for example. It was factual, it's unbiased, it's accurate about I'm saying what these reports were about. And you might use terms such as evident that a person-centred framework is underpinned by, these are all made up, for Johnston highlights that or suggests that or defines. Um, so if you're setting the scene, you might use some of these terms, UK researchers, or you might state one researcher proposes, explores, examines, aims to or compares, um, or a widely referenced integrative review conducted by Ford Johnston Butcher and Aviard concluded that, and, um, you know, you're, you're presenting the purpose, the aims of the study, and this is where you've made previous notes on your studies will really help you when you're sort of setting the scene and presenting key sort of studies there. 
So to be able to critically analyse, you need to not just set the scene, which I did in the previous slide, and describe a situation. You need to compare, contrast studies, evidence and sources. And you need to um, use professional, tentative, academic language. So something might not be definitively correct if it's somebody's perspective, for example. So you might say it may have, or it appears that, or it seems to suggest, it may, it could. Um, obviously, if something's factual, like the parameters of normal blood pressure or blood sugars, then that's different. You can state physiological facts. Um, but when comparing sources, studies, you might use some words or phrases such as um, some of the examples here. Despite Smith using this approach, Paul Johnston highlights the need for a different type of approach um, in comparison, or it could be similarly, alternatively, or however. So you might give the perspective from one study, however, this study says something different. So there's just a few tips there. And just a few tips when you're looking at synthesis, um, the so what, the impact, what are you going to do with this evidence, um, and moving forward your evidence with some conclusions as a whole or key points. So um, a few tips here. In the future, nurses may need to consider. The research studies have shown that we need more studies. Uh, findings within this assignment highlight the need for current evidence suggests mm. following my critical analysis of X, it's evident that there needs to be YZ um, and it's evident that more. So just some example and um, narrative there and some tips. So this is the Hong reference that I talked about earlier, the Mixed Methods Appraisal Tool, MMAP version 2018, and that's the full reference. And it may there may be other tools out there or an updated version, but that's uh, the current reference for that. So do check out all my other brief videos on my YouTube channel. Um, there's a real variety for all levels of nurses, and there's just a few examples there. So I hope you find this talk helpful. Um, good luck with any assignments that you've got and essays. If you want to put any comments or have any questions, put them in the comments in YouTube, or you might want to DM me privately on Twitter or on my website. And do check out my books as well. I've got a book on how to thrive as a newly registered nurse, and there's lots of references in there that are good for students as well, actually. And also a book on how to prepare for interviews and develop your career up to a band eight. So I hope um, that talk was helpful today.